quick note before I get started, I have a special announcement at the end of this episode, so make sure to stay tuned for that. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Draper. This is a ruby gem which adds decorators to your views. This is much like a presenter pattern. So if you find yourself with a lot of complex view logic in your templates and helpers, this can really help clean that up through a more object-oriented approach. Let me show you how it works. So this is the application we'll be working with. We have a user profile page here, and we have information like their avatar image, their full username, uh, their website, and if they do have a website, then we link their avatar and name to that website, uh, their Twitter profile, and we have a bio in Markdown. Now this is a pretty simple page, but we have to handle cases where no user information is present, such as this other user profile, Mr. Mystery here, which doesn't contain a lot of information. So for example, we have to provide a default uh, profile image. We have to use our username because we don't have a full name. Uh, we have to say none given where we don't have information here. So uh, we have to handle different cases depending on what information a user provides. So here's what that profile template looks like. It's pretty complex with a lot of if conditions and other logic going on here. It would be nice if we could really simplify this template and move a lot of it out somewhere else. And it's all view related logic here though, so we can't really extract it out into the model. Another solution is to use helper methods. And in fact, I do have one helper method here called avatar name. Let's take a look at it. So you can see that this here handles the case where it displays a default avatar image when a user's avatar isn't present. And we could fill this up with a lot more methods, but the problem with helper methods is that they're all just simple methods in a global namespace. There's nothing object-oriented about them. So this is a good case for a presenter, or a decorator as Draper refers to them. So the first step is to go to your gem file and add the Draper gem inside of there and then run the bundle command to install it, and then create a decorator using the Rails generate draper decorator command, and then pass in the name of the model you want to decorate, such as user. And this will generate a, an application decorator if you don't have one already, and a user decorator which inherits from the application decorator, so you can place more generic functionality in the application decorator. And here's what that generated decorator looks like. Uh, notice that it has some comments here explaining how it works. But here, let's dive right in and use this to clean up our template. If you take a look at the user's controller show action, which is the profile page, you can see we're just simply fetching the user. And if we want to wrap this in a del decorator, what we can do is call user decorator.find instead of user.find. And this will return a user decorator instance which wraps the user record and then delegates all methods to it by default. So this means our application still works even though we're working on a user decorator and not just a simple user record here. Now we can start cleaning up the view. So we can take this jumbled mess, for example, right here, and which displays the avatar and just rename this to user.avatar. And that'll call avatar on the decorator. And so inside of our decorator, let's create that avatar method and then do the same thing that we did in our view. Now, whenever you have a helper method, such as our link to if call here, you need to call it through the H method, which stands for helpers. And then whenever you reference your model, such as our user model in this case, you could just call model on it, and that'll reference the model of the decorator. So our image tag is a helper method, so we need to call it through that. And then we are referencing a helper method that we created. So it would be nice if we move this into our decorator from our user's helpers. So inside of our user's helper module, let's delete the method from inside of here and just paste it inside of our decorator. Uh, let's make it private though, like that. So now when we call this method, we no longer need to pass in the user model because, well, we're inside of our decorator object here. So we just call model instead of user here. And then that way, references that user. And then one last fix is that we need to change this to reference model. And there we go. Now we've successfully refactored out that uh, avatar functionality into a single avatar method. So now we can move on to the next line in our template here, which is uh, what's displaying the name and linking it if we have a website. So let's call it this linked name and paste this into a method here called linked name into our decorator. 
Now notice there's quite a bit of duplication here between the linked name and the avatar because they're both linking to the user's URL if it's present. And since we're in a class, it's pretty easy to just refactor this out. So let's let's make a new method down here called um, site link, and then basically do everything the same except allow us to replace the content of the link, which will be right here. So let's just switch out that content. Now we can call this method instead of having all the logic in these other two methods. Much nicer. So we'll need to replace the logic here too in the link name method. And then we'll just replace any references to user with model. Just like that. And we can reload our page here just to make sure this all works, and it does. And our template is a lot cleaner here. Now let's try refactoring out a larger chunk of view code, such as this section right here, which just displays the user's site information. So let's call a user.website, nice and simple. And then in our decorator, let's add that website method and do the same logic we had in our view. So we need to call if the models URL is present, then we want to link to, we need to call h on here because it's a, a helper method link to the model's URL. We'll pass that in here. And then otherwise, we want to render out some HTML inside of here. Now, we could just return a string inside of here, but I don't like putting HTML in a Ruby string. Another solution is to move this into a partial and render that from here, which is great if you have a lot of HTML, but here we can get by with a simple call to content tag. So we'll make a, a span tag here saying none given and then pass in the class, which is going to be none. Another option is to you know, use a template language such as Markaby or maybe Builder. So now let's repeat the same refactoring for these other two parts in the template here. I'll do that really quick. There we go, that looks a lot nicer. I just extracted that part out into the Twitter and bio methods on our decorator. So this view is looking really pretty now, but let's check out our decorator. You can see the two new methods here in our decorator, uh, Twitter and bio. And notice they look very similar to our website method. There's quite a bit of duplication here, especially on this else clause here, it's exactly the same for each one. So it would be nice if we could extract this part out into its own method. And we can use a block to help out with this as well. So here's what I'm thinking. We extract out these two lines and make a method called handle none and then pass in the value we need to check the presence of and then pass in a block. And that way, if this value is present, then it executes the block. Otherwise, it shows that span tag. So let's make that method called handle none, it takes a value, and then we have an if else statement to see if the value is present. And if it's not present, we want to render out the span tag. And if it is present, let's yield to the block. So now we can use this method in each of these other method calls, the bio, and Twitter. Just clearing out the duplication. Clearing out the rendering of the span tag. Now we just have to add a block call here, and that's it. Now those two methods have been refactored out, uh, removed most of the duplication there. Another change we might want to make here is extracting out the markdown rendering into the application decorator so that we can call this method elsewhere as well. So Let's just make this red carpet call as simple as call to markdown. And then we can have that markdown method exist inside of the application decorator. So let's make a method here called markdown and then just toss that same behavior into here and pass in some text that gets converted into markdown using the same approach that we used earlier. Now once you get the decorator in place, it's a good idea to look through the model layer for any view related code that you can move up to the decorator. For example, here in our user model, we have this method called member since, and this just basically formats the created at time. Now this I consider to be a view related code because it's formatting the date time to a format that looks nice in the view. So I think this goes in the decorator. So we can move this up into our user decorator by just pasting the method here and then calling model.createdAt inside of here. Now it's moved up into our user decorator. Now while we're inside this user decorator, there's one more feature of Draper that I want to show you, and that is the allows method. 
because right now this user decorator is going to delegate all methods to the user object, but you can filter out and uh, limit exactly what methods are allowed to be delegated to the user model for by using the allows call. Just call allows and then pass in the names of whatever methods you want to delegate, such as username, and that way only the username method will delegate underneath to the user object. And that's really all we need because that's the only method that's called from inside of our view that's not defined here in our decorator. This way you have more control over the actual interface of your decorator. Now that we're done with refactoring everything out into the decorator, let's try hitting reload here, make sure everything still works, and it does. We can even check the other profile. Everything still looks the same as it did before. We just have much cleaner view code. And here's a quick before and after shot of what we did. Here's what the template looked like initially, and here's what it looks like after our great refactoring. It looks so much more uh, nice and clearer here than what it did before, before, after. I can look at this all day, it's so much cleaner. And now for the big announcement. Here I am introducing RailsCast Pro. For just $9 a month, you can gain access to an additional Pro episode each week, which will dive into more advanced topics. I will also be releasing throughout the week uh, revised versions of older episodes to bring them up to date. In this week's Pro episode, I show you what's involved in creating a presenter from scratch, instead of using a gem such as Draper like I did in this episode. One reason to do this is that it gives you a lot more flexibility to customize it to work the way you want, and it's also not as hard as you might think. In this Pro episode, I will also cover testing presenters, both through TestUnit and RSpec, because it can be a little tricky. So for just $9 a month, you'll gain access to that Pro episode, in addition to the future Pro and revised episodes that will be released. Just head on over to railscast.com pro to subscribe. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, I will continue to release a free episode each week, just like before, so that will stay the same. I'll see you next week.